Ahoy there! Captain Benzi here, coming at you with one of the most hotly anticipated lessons for the Catskull Academy I think I've ever put out. For a long time now, a lot of folks have been asking, begging, pleading, whatever sort of uh, verb you want to use there, for me to talk about intermescent belts. What I know, what Catskull knows, and what Void knows. Now, of course, a lot of this has been held behind operational security. Catskull and Void are at war with GenFed and numerous other alliances. So there's only so much I've been allowed to sort of hint at on Reddit and on YouTube, etc. Now, I've been talking with the, the top brass here at Void, and I've finally been given permission to go ahead and actually reveal everything that we know about how these intermescent belts work. Because honestly, I sit there on YouTube and watch other people's videos. I sit there on Reddit and I read through all these posts with people theorizing about how these things work. Now, I love the fact that some people are like, I think it's like this, I think it's like this. And it's like, oh, you are so close, you're on the right track, you're thinking in the right direction, but you're not quite there yet. Yet. There have been a lot of posts and a lot of videos of people going, this is 100% how it works. I'm sitting there looking at extensive data that disproves almost everything in these posts. And it's like, I really want to say something, but I can't. Now, at long last, I can tell you guys the story of how Void Alliance and its rocket science team, thank you Sarpedon for coming up with one of the most cringeworthy names ever, I'm kidding, I love it, how the rocket science team actually managed to figure all this stuff out, and with the data we've got, talk about how these intermescent belts work, and how you, your corporation, and your alliance can benefit from them too. So strap in, there's going to be a lot of stuff here to talk about, and I'm sorry to say there's probably not going to be all that much in the way of visual excitement here either. Um, it's not like I'm showcasing some cool PvP fits or anything like that, we're going to be talking about shooting rocks with lasers. Anyway, if you do enjoy this video, let me know by hitting like on it, sub to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that notification bell to never miss an upload, let me know in the comment section down below what ships and topics you want me to cover in future videos, and finally, if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so either by pledging to support over on Patreon, or by coming and having a look at the Redbubble merchandise store. So if you've ever fancied representing the Catskull Academy on a t-shirt, hoodies, stickers, water bottles, that kind of thing, take a look, see what you find. Anyway, that all said and done then, let's talk about the rocket science team and intermescent belts. Intramescent belts first started appearing in Eve Echoes shortly after the October-November update. Now, when the first intermescent belt spawned in Catskull Void territory, Sarpedon uh, assembled what he referred to as his rocket science team, which is a brilliant name. I joke about it, but I do absolutely love it. They camped that first spawn for an entire uninterrupted week. Seven full days of someone sitting in that belt at all times, keeping an eye on it to see what it would do. We had a theory that this was a new sort of belt that would be kind of like the pirate bases. We were hoping it would level up and we were interested to see what else it would do. And sure enough, we very quickly spotted that it spawned child belts. Things like crumbling, destroyed, decayed and regional compressed belts. However, for that entire seven days, it didn't level up at all. Nothing ever seemed to happen with it. The intermescent belt itself didn't change, it just spawned these child compressed belts. However, toward the end of that week, a second intermescent spawned nearby, and whilst we were watching that one, 48 hours later, it leveled up. Immediately, we had proof that yes, these intermescent belts did level up just like pirate bases. And so we started collecting all kinds of data to figure out how and why these appeared, how and why they leveled up, and how these child compressed belts worked as well. Now, during this time, of course, other intermescent belts did spawn, but were lost. Some of these were lost to raiding parties, some of them were lost to our own miners, so immediately we set up a watch. The policy was that as if anyone was in an intermescent belt and you saw a blue arrive, you would open fire immediately. You would open fire and tell them to back off at the same time. And of course, some ships were destroyed by this. They were, of course, replaced by Void, um, and we used this as an educational opportunity. Void's biggest 
thing here in regards to the intermescent belts was education. We were trying to study them and learn as much as we could. We needed to keep those belts alive, and this was always an opportunity to help our miners understand how these worked as well. We replaced those ships, we sat down with them, and explained that you should not mine intermescent belts because they were spawning these compressed child belts. By making education its goal, Void really, I think, took a big step forward in understanding how these things worked, and we tried to get everyone involved. At some point, everyone involved, uh, everyone in Void was involved on some level in understanding and learning about these different intermescent belts and how they worked. We were all watching them, keeping data, seeing, you know, logging the time that new belts spawned, seeing when new intermescent spawned, what level the system was, what the kind of traffic flow in and out of the system was. Data collection was absolutely humongous. Like, seriously, I would love to show you this data. Unfortunately, that is locked behind OPSEC, and I cannot give you that information, but it's huge. I couldn't even put it on screen anyway, even if I was allowed to, because there is simply so much to go through. Now, we then put up a, a, a 100 million isk bounty, or a finder's fee, I suppose, on new intermescence within our territory. This was to inspire people to go out and actually look for these, and the second that one spawned, to give someone the notice that, bam, there's an intermescent in our systems. That meant we could send someone out there as security, and those people were paid again to sit in those belts and make sure that no one came in. If anyone came in, they were to open fire immediately and tell them to back away, and if any interlopers arrived, again we would muster a fleet and come to the defence of that entire intermescent belt. Basically, we would spike into local um, and then move in there um, as, as, as forcefully as we could to make sure that we kept those belts under close observation. This meant that we were spending massively more than these belts were worth. 100 million isk as a finder's fee is worth more than these belts are actually worth in themselves, massively more than. If you mine an entire intermescent from start to finish, you're not going to make 100 million isk out of that one belt. But it meant that we had observations, we, we had data, we had a way to collect data, we had belts to observe, and we could start to find out what these were doing. Now, we realized that in approximately a hundred systems that we had, about two or three intermescent belts would spawn per week. The trick was to find them before the folks who didn't know any better. We'd find a new belt, we'd spike in local, and then we would guard it. We would hold on to those belts for as long as possible. This has been a 24-7 mining operation since early December, completely uninterrupted. That one fleet that we started back in early December is still operational today. Like, there is always at least one or two ships in that fleet, keeping an eye open on these belts um, and figuring out what's going on with them, and this operation continues to cycle. That is possibly the longest ongoing operation, industrial or otherwise, in the entirety of EVE Echoes, and quite frankly, I think that's something to really be proud of. That's the kind of thing that only an alliance like Void can do. Because we value education so much, we're here to talk to each other, here to help each other out, and by getting everyone involved in this, both the combat pilots as security and as scouts, the industrialists to sort of sit there and start collecting data, there was a lot of in-game and out-of-game stuff going on that can only be done in an alliance like Void that is so hooked in with our members, making sure that we get everyone involved and as much information as possible. We decided early on that learning about these was more important than the ISK we could make from them. That was, I think, key to Void's success here. Now, just as a, a point as well, our oldest belt, still in existence, dates all the way back to December 18th. We've lost so many other belts to ignorance, you know, miners coming in and getting rid of them and mining them out of existence, and of course to the war with Genfed. Um, there's been a lot lost, but our oldest belt does date all the way back to December 18th. That's, that's how hot we have been on protecting these belts where possible. Now, as I sit and look around Reddit and I watch other YouTube videos as well, trying to get an idea of what other people know about these, one thing has come to my attention, that Void seriously holds so much more data here 
than anyone else. I read through these theories on Reddit, I hear these theories on YouTube about how to spawn intumescent belts, what they do, how they level up, that kind of thing, and then I go and look at our data. And we've got an entire team of folks who are doing this. Our rocket scientist team is still around looking over this data, reading other people's reports, and trying to make heads and tails of it. And unfortunately, None of these are congruent with Void's extensive data. There's tons of theories going around about how to level up intumescent belts and how to spawn them. There is nothing that anyone has come up with, both ourselves and outside Void, that has actually been congruent with the data we have. 100%, I wish I could say, this is how you spawn intumescent belts. As far as we're concerned, it is completely random. No theory is supported by the data that Void has. You know, things like different system levels affecting it, or traffic or gates, like with the pirate bases, just don't seem to matter. I can tell you now straight away as well that we've noticed that whether or not you're mining in the system with intumescent belts doesn't change anything. They've leveled up as fast when we've got people mining in the system or when there's no one in the system. We've had belts that just seem to level up every day or two. We've had belts that don't level up for weeks at a time and they're the same security level. They're the same sort of traffic fall through going through them. All of this kind of thing. It's, you know, whether these appear in high sec, low sec, null sec, all over the place. System security appears to have little to no effect at all on belts leveling or appearing. Footfall in and out of systems doesn't seem to affect it either. Mining, ships being destroyed, there is nothing that we can see that actually influences this. Yes, we've even looked at does having ships blown up in that system help it? What about things in the same constellation? If you're doing something in that constellation, does it help that particular intumescent? And the answer is we don't know! We don't know. The data doesn't support any theory that I have ever seen. Now, interestingly, we decided very early on as well in Void not to go after other intumescent belts in other people's territory. We made that a very clear decision that, yes, we could fly out to Geminut or to, you know, Venal or to other people's territory, find their intumescent belts and mine them. We could go into places like Immensi, Tenerifis, we could go into the Golden Horde, Genfed, you name it, and, you know, steal their intumescence. We made a a big point early on. There was a lot of discussion went on about whether or not we should do that. You know, groups that we weren't overly friendly with, should we go into their systems and mine their intumescence? And the answer flat out was no. No, we will leave these other intumescents. In fact, we set up watch on theirs too. We would park covert ops ships, things like uh, stealth bombers or pr uh, probe covert ops, that kind of thing. We would park these in those systems and watch other people's belts as well just to see if we could figure out what went on there. Now, and our first observation here was that they never lasted long. They were, without fail, mined within a couple of hours of their existence. So we would sit and watch, we would not interfere, we would stay cloaked, and we would see that these belts spawned, and a couple of hours later, they'd be mined into oblivion. Now, <laughs> when the Genfed War started, yes, they did sadly start targeting many of our own intumescent belts, at which point Void did retaliate. We knew where a lot of these belts were, and we immediately wiped them clean. It's not something that we're ultimately proud of, but war is war, and if they're going to wipe our belts, we're going to wipe theirs too. It's sad for the science side of things, but that's war. War is a great bedfellow for science, you know, a lot of what war requires will push science forward. But unfortunately, when you've got interlopers coming into your systems and ultimately destroying your evidence, like literally destroying your experiments whilst you're watching them, that's kind of what's going on here. And I'm not bitter about that. That's war. That's how EVE works. People say, oh, you go on about this gen-fed war all the time and you make these sort of passive-aggressive comments. I find it hilarious. War is the entire point in EVE Echoes. In EVE, war is the entire point. If there's no war going on, there's no point building ships because no one's going to lose them. And if no one's building ships, no one's mining. And if no one's mining and building ships, in the first place, what's the point in even getting ISK? ISK just becomes a high score, you're not using it to buy anything because you're not needing to replace anything. That's the nature of war. But it means that when Genfed started coming for our intumescence, we started going for theirs as well. Now, Void did share this kind of intel with our allies, nearby allies and other systems as well. We gave them the info that we had as we got it. I'm honestly astonished that the information that we've had in Void here has not been passed out beyond all of this. You don't see these massive posts and videos giving this full information. 
just and I don't get that. We gave it to so many people. I'm amazed that it didn't leak. Anyway, so we shared this intel with our allies, confirming, for example, that these leveled up in December, and our allies reported this exact same difficulty of keeping miners out of these belts. The biggest problem with intumescent belts isn't getting them to spawn. The problem isn't getting them to spawn, it's getting them to stay alive. Ultimately, Granberia, one of our industrialists, one of our head industrialists, has been quoted as saying that the key to intumescence is keeping your own damn miners from mining them before you know they exist. And, well, true words never were spoken. The question has been on a lot of people's minds, why does Void have so darn many of these intumescent belts? Surely they know the secret of how to spawn them. No. That's not true, we don't know how to spawn them. As far as we're aware, there is no way to actually influence how to spawn these. The reason that Void has so many intumescent belts is because we started observing them and protecting them in November and December. We started our security and our observation all the way right then at the beginning. We made the decision straight away not to mine the first one of these we found. When it appeared, we sat and watched it. We left it alone and we decided to observe it for all kinds of information and see what we could learn about it there rather than just get the ores out of it, which I think a lot of other people saw these intumescents, walked into them and went, holy heck, holy heck, there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. Let's mine this and then word spread that these are lucrative belts and so when one appears, it gets mined instantly. This means that we also paid that active scouting fee, as I said, a 100 million ISK reward to anyone who reported the presence of an intumescent belt. We would immediately get security in there, we would guard those systems and keep an eye on them to learn what we could and keep those intumescents going. That's why we have so many. Sarpedon, when I said to him, why do you think Void has so many? He said, actually, in honesty, I'm surprised we have so many left. It's not about how many we've created, it's about how few we've actually managed to save. But it seems that Void has been able to save more of these than any other reliance out there, and we attribute that to our sort of environment of education and learning. I'd like to think that's partly because I'm in Void and, you know, making videos and things is, is what I do and people want to get involved in that, but ultimately it's just what Void is. When Catskull joined Void after leaving the Golden Horde, it's, you know, Void were some of our oldest friends. We've known them since back in the open beta and the final test. We've been close allies with them for that entire time. And when we came back and joined them after the Golden Horde, it was because we were coming home. We were coming back to old friends. And we share a lot of values and education, sharing knowledge and working out how this game works is a big part of that. We're not just here to blow ships up and mine stuff and make our members rich. For us, the ISK isn't as important as the fun or the knowledge. That's kind of the point here. Now, if you're sitting in your reliance and wondering, well, where the hell are all of our intumescent belts? What what we've seen with our allies and what we've seen with watching other, you know, other empires outside of our own space is that this isn't an industry problem. It's scouting and security. If you're not finding any, it's probably because your miners or your allies are mining them without telling you. Your intumescents are probably spawning just fine, but the first person to spot them is clearing them out for personal gain rather than letting you guys know that those intumescent belts exist. That means you're not getting all those child belts, which of course is a problem. Now, in order to rectify this, as I said, it's not an industry problem. This is all about scouting and security. You will have to fire on blues. We have always used this as a point of education. When you open fire on someone, you tend to have their attention, especially when they're blue. You'll see that a miner gets opened fire on, immediately warps out, and then goes, what the hell were you shooting at me for? At which point, a conversation window has opened, and we can sit there and educate this pilot into why they should not be mining intumescent belts. We have this information, of course, going around on the Void Discord and saying, don't mine intumescence, don't mine intumescence, but there are always going to be people who miss that kind of information. And the whole point of this education was just to keep people informed, keep everyone on the same page and working to together towards this greater goal, which is exactly what Void has always been about. Now, as I said, we did always replace those ships that were destroyed, and lest they were repeat offenders, we have actually removed people from uh, Void, 
and from Catskull, who insisted on still mining in Chimessence and were trying to get in there sneakily, you know, spotting, we observed people basically jumping into an intumescent belt and mining it and trying to fly away um, without telling anyone. And it's like, why? You're, you're, you're ta it's that whole thing where they talk about, you know, if we put three sweets on a plate and we say to the child, you can have one of them now, or if you wait an hour, you can have all three. What those people are doing is taking the one sweet now rather than waiting an hour for the other three. Um, it's actually probably worse than that. You're taking, what, about three million isk worth of ore out of one intumescent? and avoiding all of those compressed ore belts spawning. Yeah, the big point here is we have been hot on the security of these particular belts. We've been watching them and we've been educating wherever possible. So, how do they actually work? Well, basically, intumescent belts, as I said, spawn randomly. We, all you have to do is have a look at void space, fly through void space without getting blown up, and if you can spot where our intumescent belts are, you will understand we did not choose to spawn them there. They are not in good systems. If we had a, tr a secret of how to spawn these, we would not have put them where they currently are. But that's, you know, just, just kind of how it works. So these things spawn randomly. They then, on the hour, have a chance of spawning a compressed belt, either a crumbling, destroyed, decayed, or regional. And that's going from lowest amount of ore up to highest. So crumbling is the lowest, destroyed has a bit more ore in it, decayed has a little bit more than that, and regional has a little bit more than that too. It's about an even chance from what we've noticed of each of those spawning. So if, if a belt does spawn, if a compressed belt does spawn, from an intumescent, it is a 25%, approximately 25% chance of being crumbling, destroyed, decayed, or regional. It's an even chance for each of those. Busier systems do tend towards a slightly higher spawn rate, but the data that we have, as comprehensive as it is, is just a trend. There's nothing that says, yes, 100%, the, uh, the, foot, the footfall in a system definitely affects it. We've got some very busy systems that don't seem to spawn that often. We've got some quiet systems that seem to spawn more frequently than some of the other ones. But at the same token, we're kind of looking at the information around us and just trying to find a trend. And the overall trend is that higher spawn rate is in busier systems, but it's not 100% um, accurate. Unfortunately, the robust data that we were collecting did get interrupted by this war with GenFed. But hey, again, as I said, that's not bitterness. That's just fact. It did get interrupted. We have gaps in our data. Anyway, they do level up slowly over time. Again, there is no real pattern to how quickly these level up, um, how fast they are. The security system doesn't seem to have much of an impact at all, if any. The footfall in the system doesn't matter. The amount of mining going on in the system doesn't matter. Combat doesn't matter. Um, th there just seems to be nothing that triggers how these actually level up. They just randomly seem to level up. It's almost like there's a chance that it will level up, and occasionally it does. As I said, our first belts, we had two intumescent spawn early on in November, um, and the first one that spawned took a week, and it did nothing. It didn't level up at all during that week. Our second one leveled up within 48 hours. All we were doing was observing. Nothing else happened in those systems, just observation, and both were the same security level. So, eh, you tell me. Now, they do respawn in the same system, weeks apart. We've had belts that have been destroyed, and two or three weeks later, it has respawned in that same system. So it's not like once it's gone, it's gone forever, and they do seem to respawn in the same system. Now, they do appear and level up at the same rate, even if other belts are being mined. As I said, we have no information here at all um, about what actually affects the level up or the spawn rate. It's... it honestly appears to be completely random. We have reams of data, and they don't support any existing theory. We have four months worth of this intensive data, and there is no reliable way to control the spawn. There have been theories that we've put forward, like, what if we do this, and bam, a belt has spawned on the hour, and it's like, ha ha, we've got it. We've then been completely unable to reproduce that, so it looks like it was just random chance that kind of just went, coincided with what we were trying to do. So basically, that's it right there. That is everything that Void knows about these intumescent belts. 
There's no reliable way to spawn them, there's no reliable way to get them to level up, but what they do is they spawn these ridiculously lucrative, decaying, uh, these ridic uh, compressed belts, these ridiculously lucrative compressed belts, crumbling, destroyed, decayed, and regional belts. Those are what you're looking for. Protect your intumescence. Make sure your miners know not to mine them, and you keep an idea away. You know, you, you keep your other miners away from those belts forcefully if you have to. Send people to this video. Get them to watch me rambling for however long this video is going on now um, about intumescent belts and see that they understand how this all works. Stop people mining intumescence. It's not worth it in the long run. The better thing to do is to get those compressed. And I would actually argue that despite history, despite what GenFed have done, despite what Void have done, it is not in anyone's interests to be destroying these intumescent belts. If you go into someone's systems, yeah, it can be great fun to get an intumescent belt. We had a little battle happen with GenFed as an example. That uh, we moved into their station, one of our guys built a retriever in that station, um, and then took it out and mined their intumescent belt whilst the battle was raging. And that's a hilarious story. But scientifically speaking, I do weep that we didn't get to watch that intumescent. We didn't get to collect the data from it. So I would hope, I would hope that war aside, outside of this war, we can all come together as a community, look at these intumescent belts, and see if we can't gather even more data as to how these spawn. Because trust me, I have looked at every single post on Reddit. I don't tend to respond to them because there's not much point. I've looked over every single one of these. We've got teams of people going over this data constantly, trying to figure out how to get these to spawn, how they work. And there is nothing. There is no data at all that seems to be congruent with any theory we have. Anyway, folks, I've been rambling on entirely too long here about these intumescent belts. I'm just sitting here um, in a mining operation in my hurricane, um, quietly watching everyone else in their retrievers and procurers um, emptying a couple of belts while I play security um, and just keep an eye on people with blue flashing lasers. For an idea, obviously I've blurred out details here, but this is not an intumescent or a... Um, or, or a compressed belt of any kind. This is just a standard mining belt that I'm sitting here at the moment. And again, clearing those doesn't seem to spawn anything. It doesn't seem to trigger leveling up, doesn't seem to do anything as far as these goes. If you have any information at all, any theories about these that you think seem to be working, do let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to see someone get something. I will have a look every single one of those comments that goes down there of someone saying, hey, I think it's this. Our team thinks that if you do this, a belt spawns. Put the information down below. I will go through every single one of those and I will check it against our personal data and see if it is congruent and if it looks a likely candidate. Anyway, folks, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's been enlightening. I'm sorry that it's taken so long to put this one out, and I'm sorry that it's so sort of rambly. I wanted to tell the story here. No, I didn't just want to say, hey, this is what they are and how they work. I wanted to tell the story of how we found this, because I thought it was a really cool journey that Void took together in order to get this information, and I wanted to make it abundantly clear that when you say, oh, I think it's this, I think it's that, and I say, no, it's not, that you don't think I'm just being dismissive. I wanted to explain how I know this information and how much information and data we actually have on this topic. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching and bearing with us. Good fighting out there to GenFed. I know that there's a lot of propaganda goes around. I love the propaganda. I love it when people mock Void. I love it when people mock GenFed. We have a lot of fun in this war together. But please stop taking it personally. It's not about you as a GenFed pilot or me as a Void pilot. It's about two alliances butting heads, blowing up ships, and doing what EVE was designed to do. Peace out. Love you, GenFed. Happy sailing, and see you all in New Eden.